there, parents and students. This will be College Jumpstart meeting number eight, probably our most important because it's right before the opening of the CSU application period, as well as the opening of the FAFSA period on October 1st. Now, they're not due on that day, but I'll talk a lot about those in just a moment. First of all, I think it's, a, it's probably a good time for us to review the pathways to career and life for our students. Uh, college is not the goal. It's just a step toward the goal. It's a pathway. Uh, let's stop um, thinking that the goal of all this is just to get to college. I've seen so many students uh, just get to the college that they want or a family get a student to a college that they want. And it just creates five years of career wandering. Because again, we think just because we get a degree, we have a career and that's totally untrue in today's uh, college admission world. It's totally and utterly untrue. All right, so I wanna be sure you really understand that. It's very, very important that we, that we do that, okay? Uh, now, uh, let's go ahead and look at these pathways. We have high school graduation, as you see on the screen. Four-year college, and we get a career. And that's the way for years it's gone. In fact, in fact, many of you as parents, that was your experience uh, with this college process. It was pretty much assured through 2008, or so maybe even nine, I guess, when I ran the program years ago. I just wanted them to get degrees. I realized they would get great jobs. Uh, and that was the way things went. But then the bust of 2008 occurred and we became an experience driven economy. So I began to tell students that they needed a parallel path of professional development training where they would get skills on the computer or web development skills or life skills that would go along with their four-year degree, not replacing the four-year degree, but along with the four-year degree. So that's the way we were probably for the last few years. Um, I began to see even before the COVID crisis affected our job stream uh, that that wasn't quite enough for every student. And I began to get partnerships that I'll talk about in a minute that led me to see these other paths are equally important. I knew they were there and I had students that were already succeeding. I had a couple of partners already. Uh, but this is another realizable path that many of you took as parents maybe to your college where you could go to four-year college later or you go ahead and start your career. Um, particularly if you understand you can get certifications and job training in a two-year college for a very, very, very reasonable price uh, without getting a lot of debt. A lot of people just start their careers. And still another path I found out was viable, that you get professional development training right out of high school, and you can start your career or go on to your college. So these are all viable pathways that I wish that um, you'd be aware of as a parent and the students be aware of <clears throat> as well. I'm not, this is not to say they should not go to college uh, of some sort. I didn't say that here. I just pointed out that there were other pathways get one's life started that include college, but that college is a stepping stone or in the pathway, if you will, if you can see over here in the pathway uh, to getting success. All right, starting your life. All right, I hope that's very clear to you. Here's some alternate uh, career starts <clears throat> to go and directly to four year, a traditional, I should say, four year college. These can reduce your costs up to 400,000 a year for four years. Here's some of our partners. First, there's Charles Drew University. It's an impressive healthcare or impressive health science care career. For sometimes one tenth the cost of traditional private college. Charles Drew is located in South Central uh, Los Angeles, uh, actually south of South Central Los Angeles, right off the 105 uh, freeway is where you'll find it. Okay, uh, it's right here in Los Angeles. Okay. Then there's Trade Tech College, who's our newest partner. <clears throat> They're a great career training institution. They offer some great certifications, have some really overdeveloped programs in real estate, cosmetology, food, nutrition. They have a great matriculation agreement with the USC. They also have all kinds of uh, plumbing and welding certifications, 
and computers and network certifications. Uh, and they're really known for those as well. So uh, definitely want to consider a career path, a parallel career path to getting a four-year degree is getting some type of job skill uh, uh, to go along with your college degree. Or some would even say it might turn out to be instead of it. Um, I have a lot of students that have gone this direction, are doing very well in life, and they go back to school when they can, okay? Uh, once they get established in their career, they go back to school. There's nothing wrong with that. El Camino College Project Success is a great internal enrichment program for Black and Hispanic students. 90% of their students make it to a four-year college in two years. So you want to think about El Camino Project Success. You can look that up on the, on the, by Googling El Camino Project Success, and you can learn about that program. We'll be talking about that program. I hope to have them visiting us on the college night real soon as well. Then as H&R Healthcare, I often tell nursing students, just go be a nurse. Start on your CNA. I just don't want to see students getting 20 or 30,000 in debt just to pass the CNA exam. You don't have to do that. There's H&R Healthcare, our partner, which will do it for you for $1,400. I believe they have a $100 scholarship here from our program. And the student can get their CNA certification, certified nursing assistant, and start being a nurse. Uh, that's the best way to start a nursing career. Go be a nurse. Uh, there are other careers like that as well, where I say just go and do the field uh, while you're going for your four-year degree. Now, again, this is an alternative to thinking that I, I have to have a four-year degree. It's the only way I could be a nurse. Well, you can still have a four-year degree in health science or and still go for your four-year nurse degree all the while you're working in the profession. So you're building up experience and confidence in your field. And then when you go take the, the RN exam, uh, you have practical experience go along with your training. And you may not even need the four-year degree, all right? Um, I know there's a push from some hospitals to say they want four-year nursing degrees, but it can't sustain because of the tremendous shortage of nurses. Uh, so think about that if you're going into nursing, if your student's going to go into nursing, or if you're a student here now, if you're going to go into nursing. All right, okay. Uh, how about getting through college faster and with fewer dollars? Well, there's we have our two-year virtual classes, two-year college virtual classes with our partner, Los Angeles Trade Tech College. They're offering two classes just for us that start later this month. They're on a separate start from the normal semester. Runs from the end of October to the middle of December. Classes are Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Please go to our website and click on more at the top. I'm sorry, go along the top and click on college process and you'll find a, a uh, some information on LA Trade Tech College or actually look at the banner across the top and click on that banner when it says, you know, two-year college classes for credit. Uh, and students should get college credits while they're in high school, especially now in our current situation. There may be a lot of dead time when students are at home. It's not really that hard to study online under those circumstances since they're doing it anyway. Why not get a credit or two for that? Each one of these classes is three credits. Psychology uh, 100, that should be, I'm sorry, and History 11, okay? Just again, get a hold of me at my office for details. You can email c Martin, uh, cmartinez.eep at gmail.com if you want to get information by email. My assistant, project assistant, Christina Martinez is standing by. Again, that's cmartinez.eep at gmail.com or go to our website and register for it, okay? What will we pay for CSU? This is a big part of our meeting today. What will we pay for college? So let's talk about CSU first, California State University, of course. Here's the high school family of, of class of 2021. It's all based on family income, by the way. So if there's two parents in the house, it's both parents' income. This will keep you out of trouble with the law and the government. Uh, even if they file taxes separately, both incomes should be considered. It's considered as family income. If you have a family income of up to $40,000, as shown by line seven on the 2019 tax return, you'll pay zero to $300 a month for CSU. That's right. It's almost nothing out of pocket. And that's why you got to have a really good reason to go into a lot of debt above that for college if you're making that kind of income. One thing, you probably can't pay the loan anyway. 
and for that you'd have to take out as a parent. And for another thing, it's um, it's no cost. You can you can you can pretty, pretty much low cost. You may be able to easily afford it. So have a good reason if you're going to go out of state and not do one of our 23 California State Universities. What we pay for UC, University of California. For family incomes of up to 60,000, line seven on that 20, 2019 return, 1040. Uh, you're gonna pay zero to $700 per month, depending on the number of dependents and the GPA of the student, okay? Certainly very manageable for, C, for UC. Let's look at CSU for a slightly different situation. This is 40,000 to 58,000, again on line seven to 1040. Uh, 1040 2019 return, you're going to pay $300 to $1,200 a month for CSU. Okay, most people are in that five or $600 range, but again, it depends on number of dependents and a little bit on the GPA of the student. How about UC for $40,000 to $80,000? That's about 55% of my demographic in my program. That's the income as shown on the tax return. You'll pay $300 to $1,400 a month for UC, okay? You might wonder why I can't pay $1,400 a month. You'll have to take out loans. We'll talk about the parent loan in just a minute. And then here's the normal middle class situation we have in our demographic. The income is 60,000 plus. you're gonna pay 1,300 to $2,000 per month for CSU, all right? If you wanna get a copy of these view graphs, uh, just email me at uh, holythinkers at gmail.com, holythinkers with an S at gmail.com. I'll mention it at the end again. I'll be glad to send you a copy of the presentation or link to it. How about another UC example of 80,000 plus? You'll pay 1,300 to 3,200 $1, $1, per month depending on the income level uh, and number of dependents is mostly dominating at this level. Okay, 1,300 to 3,200 a month for UC for that 80,000 plus uh, parent uh, family. How about private colleges? At 80,000 plus, that's the typical demographic. It's 2,300 to $3,800 per month, which is a lot. Uh, so you can see it compared uh, as compared to UC and it's most expensive, for example, which was 1300 to 3200 It's cheaper, right? UC is much cheaper, and students can get into UC, uh, you know, uh, the same way, uh, in the same way they can get in, in the private school, they probably can get in UC. So that's the UC situation, 2300 to 3800 per month. There are some cases when the, when the GPA is extremely high, that private college would be cheaper than UC, okay? But GPA and SAT have to be, well, GPA, there's not gonna be a lot of schools looking at SAT, but GPA has to be extremely high. Here's a parent loan table that I presented also in the meeting last night. You can see that for typical CSU, it's running 30 to $50,000 for four years to be on the campus and away from home. And UC in private is the range of costs these are per year costs, by the way. This is per year, everyone. Uh, so, uh, I'm sorry, this is a four year amount. Uh, you can cut it, divide it by four. I showed the per year amounts. Here's the monthly payments right here that you would pay on that loan. So, you end up having 100,000 loans, then you'll be paying 1,172 for 10 years. That's what you'd end up repaying 40,000 extra dollars over that 10 year period. So you can see the kind of debt you can accumulate. And I've seen parents be two, two fifty, dollars even $300,000 in debt to send their children to college. Um, that's why we got to watch trying to assume the name of college is worth getting in this kind of debt. It's just probably not worth it, okay? How about alternatives to spending that kind of money for a private college or going into debt for that matter? You can go to a local CSU, a local CSU like Long Beach, LA, Poly Pomona, or Dominguez Hills. You can live at home or apartment nearby. The cost for tuition anyway, will be about $170 per month 
maybe less. It depends on a couple of factors. Uh, that's assuming a student takes out a student direct loan, which, is about, which will be about uh, $5,500 that first year. Consider also certain Western public universities like Nevada, Reno, Boise State, or Arizona, Northern Arizona. But stay away from the um, well-known ones that everybody wants to go to. They're going to be thirty-five to fifty thousand per year. You know, Arizona State, Arizona, Washington, Washington State, Oregon, and Oregon State. These are all very popular with students, but they're also very expensive. Uh, thirty-five to fifty thousand per year. Certain private college partners and others, like George Washington, Seattle Pacific, Grand Canyon, and Howard. Howard is a good school for cost, but it's for higher GPA, GPA at this point. You got to be 3.8 or above. I say and SAT, but that's an old view graph. There's not, Howard's not looking for SAT this year. They're not speaking much about it. They'll say much about, more about it later. They can't expect when half the country still actually one ninth of all the students in, Cal are in California, for example, aren't even going to have SAT scores because of the uh, response to the pandemic. CSUs and UCs um, are a good way to save money. You can save tens of thousands of dollars in savings. You can save in those school for those schools. And I showed what they costed a minute ago, which was way less than a private college. There's certain, finally, there are certain traditionally black colleges rather than private HBCUs they're actually very good buys. Norfolk State, Virginia State, Prairie View, a and Tuskegee. These, Tuskegee I included, it's a private college, but it also is a very good buy. Uh, you'll find it easier to, 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 to obtain um, merit awards for these schools. And in those states, they're welcoming out-of-state out students, especially Virginia, that's why I have Norfolk State and Virginia State that are on for that state, all right? So if you want to get a black college, there's only very few where you can, you know, go affordably. Here are four college affordability errors you might be making right now, as we advertise on the net we would cover in this session. You could have too many AP classes in your 12th grade year. That would, that would, cause, an, that would cause an adverse effect on your application quality have a lot of students that can't get to their essays because they're so busy with their AP classes. And then they rush and put, throw together their applications. It lowers the grades in a key semester that you might need to demonstrate admissibility. Uh, AP classes do lower grades, no question. Easier ways, there are easier ways to get college credit. As I said earlier, you could just get our trade tech classes online, get credit that way. Don't, don't feel like AP classes are the only way to get college credit. And by the way, the test pass rates for the AP tests are about 30%. So most students do not pass uh, the AP test. I mean, some of them are easy to pass, but the overall average is 30%. The, the second reason uh, affordability error you could be making is confusing major and career. This leads students to a smaller group of more expensive colleges. As a general unawareness, third bullet, beforehand of cost of colleges. I mean, no, well, you might you know, spend more because just for unaware, you could spend less at certain schools, which is why I presented the CSUs and the UCs earlier in this meeting here. There's an unbalanced college list. You don't have any affordable colleges on your list. You don't have any colleges that are in these categories that we spoke of earlier on the list, okay? And that will, of course, lead to be an affordability error because you spend a lot more, thousands more for college. All right? Let's talk about CSU application delivery since it opens October 1st. I always say, please remain calm. It's not due October 1st. You'll start hearing in the media that, and they'll make you think, some counselors make you think, if you apply early, you'll get in easier. It's not true. Um, CSUs don't inform students till February, March, through March. There's a few that don't. I'll cover those. It's due November 30th. So we'll be delivering CSUs throughout the month of October. There'll be more than a month on schedule, okay? So please don't feel like, you know, your application is going to be late um, if you deliver after October 1st. But the period does open October 1st. We'll deliver some on October 1st. Those that are already in our system, we'll explain that in a minute. 
There are exceptions that CSU will inform early students. They'll inform students at Bakersfield, Channel Island, and Dominguez early, you know, probably later this year, December, if they'll admit to the school. But most of you are not going to apply to those schools, or I think some of you should. You're just not going to apply to those schools. And so it's not really a factor. You're going to wait till March either way. We will deliver the CSU application October 1st to 31st. All who have had a college readiness review with me, where we have the parent, student, and sometimes a, a key stakeholder will be in a meeting with me and we'll come up with a college list. This is where we'll come up with the CSU list. So if you've had a college readiness conference, you're probably going to get delivered earliest, your um, CSUs anyway. All have completed the online application data form. And those were dated when people submitted them. So we pretty much know the 10 that are going to be delivered. Once delivered, the fee is $55 for us to submit the CSU application. OK. Uh, and follow up with your youth. See, the big thing is following up. We'll teach the youth how to follow up on that application and see the messages that CSU is sending them and read the email and open up the portals that they should be opening up to monitor the status of the application because they're only going to inform the student by mail or through a portal. They don't mail letters anymore, okay? Uh, one CSU does, and I can't remember which one that is right now. Here's some common reasons for not admission to CSU. CSUs on the list are all impacted and the students' grades were not high enough. Improper major versus CSU list. In other words, you need to have a sensitivity to what CSUs offer what majors. These are reasons for not admission to CSU. Student does not regularly read their emails. Ooh, that's a big one. You can miss a note in there and you get set back and you don't get admitted. Student does not probably set up portals. We'll show them how to do that <coughs> if we file the, uh, C the CSU application. Grades are improperly self-reported. That's a big one and it's pretty common that grades are, are self-reported incorrectly uh, because the application is not user-friendly. It's easy to mess up. This is another reason why we do it here for the students. A to G requirements, A to G requirements. These are high school class requirements are not met or not properly replaced, replaced grades. So there's E's and F's that weren't replaced. Test scores were not sent, but see, we're not gonna have test scores this year. So that one we can just forget about. So these are the common reasons for non-admission. Okay, here is the FAFSA financial aid award process here. The FAFSA is delivered, the federal government makes a student aid report and sends it to the family and to the school. The CS profile could be developed from that same data, okay? And, the, and then the CS profile and which is a special financial aid document for certain private colleges, not every private college, that's why it's a dash line. And it's sent to the colleges that are on the FAFSA as well as the FAFSA get it, colleges getting it, okay? So FAFSA colleges get this student aid report, colleges on the FAFSA. By the way, it's 10 per, off, so then you have to resubmit for the remaining ones. The preliminary financial aid award is delivered right here. Okay, it's delivered right there. Excuse me. And then the final financial aid award is delivered right over here. Okay. What you will need to file your FAFSA, what I will need to file your FAFSA for you, you need the same things as well. You must have your 2019 federal income tax return completed, including the amendments. I will request specific lines of information from the tax return for the FAFSA. When I, you know, when I send you the link for the data sheet, it will ask for lines from your tax return. So I'm not gonna ask for the tax return and schools won't ask for it either. They ask for information from the return. So you need to be reading from your return in order to fill out my data sheet or do your own FAFSA. The FAFSA will be filed the 5th to the 20th. We get the completed 2021-22 FAFSA data sheet by October 1st. How do you get that? You need to email me, there's my email address, and get a FAFSA data sheet link plus an email invoice for $51 sent to you. Uh, we must have the data sheet and the payment. We will help you through the financial aid process once we submit the FAFSA all the way to student enrollment. So we won't leave you high and dry because the schools may ask you for more information 
you'll have a person or a place to go to to get that information. But it all starts with the free college readiness conference. Some of your three-year unofficial transcript of students, right, parents? I want a PDF file that you can email me, not a picture, please. Uh, if test scores, if you have them, but they're not required. Consult your youth and any other stakeholder parents' schedules and recommend two dates and times when we can meet via a Zoom meeting. I'll set up a Zoom meeting once you do that. Remember, you have to pick and recommend the dates and times. Um, it's better for you to recommend it uh, for a lot of reasons. During the meeting, we'll form a preliminary college list. We will suggest the appropriate level of support and your cost for our support if necessary. Other FAFSA considerations, I think you should order your username and password today. You need one for the student and one for the parent. There's the URL for that to create it. And I say on here, remember youth and parents each must need a FAFSA username and password. Take the time to order the username and password today. We will ask for the FAFSA username and password on the data sheet that we send you to. So you need to order those today, okay? Something I really can't do for you. You need to order the usernames and passwords. If you order this document and control click, you'll go right to it, okay? If you get the actual document, okay? All right, you can email me for that and here's how you can do that. Here are all our email addresses right here. Uh, you can email Quinn Davis at quinndavis.eep at gmail and ask her for the FAFSA link and she'll send you the FAFSA link or the CSU data link, she'll send you that as well. Christina Martinez, our general administrative support. If you, person, if you wanna get trade tech classes, you email her. If you wanna get involved in our homework club program, you get along, get a hold of her too, but Quinn is specifically handling the forms and the direct college support. There's my cell number here if you wanna call or text me uh, for something that you need. If you wanna to try to set up a meeting with me, it's right there on that page. All right, parents, uh, I'm gonna thank you very much for your, for your attention and your time uh, with, the set, with this session. Uh, that's all I had for you today. I hope that you can make our next Zoom meeting. It looks like it'll be two weeks from the day and also I'll be speaking at the Lakewood City College Fair. It's a virtual college fair. I'll be speaking on three nights there. I'll let you know about those too. But try to make some of these live sessions. Reason why is, the questions, the question and answers last night, we had about 20 questions and answers for questions from parents. And most of them, just about all of them were great questions and provided great information that was as good as my view graphs. So please, please try to make our live meetings and you yourself can ask questions as well. It's very, very important you make the live meetings. God bless you. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this helped you have it. Give me feedback on how this worked out for you, okay?